Leslie Ellis, and this is Video Translation Please, coming to you from Atlanta, where we'll get the Cox Communications point of view on advanced advertising, bandwidth, cross-platform, DOCSIS 3.0, and mobile broadband. I'm here with Chris Bowick, and the topic is bandwidth. Chris, Cox has been very active with its gigahertz upgrades. And if my math is correct, that gets you between 140 and 250 additional megahertz. That's a lot of bandwidth. How far along are you with the upgrades to a gigahertz? Uh, well, so far, Leslie, what we've done is we've upgraded about 82,000 miles of plant. Actually, out of 107,000 miles. So um, we'll upgrade another 12,000 next year and another 2,000 in 2010. Now, that, you can see that doesn't quite add up to 107. So we'll end in 2010 with the Eon upgrades uh, such that about 80% of our homes past will be at one gig and the other 20% will be at, um, at 860. Uh, and during that entire time, we've also um, done about 2,100 node splits We'll do another 1,600 node splits in the next couple of years. And uh, we're down around 550 homes passed per node. So uh, it gets us in, in pretty good shape. And your math is right. Your math is right. That puts, uh, gives us quite a bit of bandwidth to work with for new services, whether it's uh, new HD services or whether we put DOCSIS 3.0 uh, expanded bandwidth up in up in the spectrum above 860. A lot of things that we can do up there. And if you look at the the top three ways to get bandwidth back, there's analog spectrum recapture, going to a gigahertz, and switched. By my calculations, gigahertz gets you the second most bandwidth back, depending on how much analog you would take back. So, long way of saying, what cho what caused you to choose the the path of going to a gigahertz? Well, when you, when you think back to where we were um, a couple of years ago, um, we were looking out several years at what our product mix was going to look like. And one of our, our uh, stakes in the ground at the time was that, you know, if we have 70 or 75 analog channels and we'd like to keep 70 or 75 analog channels, that puts us in a really good competitive position and I'm speaking, this is a, a couple of years ago now. And so 70 to 75 analog channels, when you think about it, um, you, can, you can provide that cap capability, that capacity to um, every AO in the house without a box being there. And no one even has to take a box mm -hmm. if, um, uh, unless they decide that they want to have some advanced services. Um, and no other competitor in the industry can do that. So. Being as we felt that was a, a very strong competitive advantage and the fact that as an industry, we've always invested in bandwidth uh, and have very, been very pleased with our investments in bandwidth uh, over the years. We felt that that was a much better investment at the time than, for example, buying um, millions of digital set-tops at current prices. Uh, that would be extremely, extremely expensive, and then taking, uh, taking the company all digital. Uh, so really, that was, that was what drove us um, to expanding and investing in, in the extra bandwidth. But when you think about it, all right, I mentioned the, the fact that we wanted to maintain 70 or 75 analog channels. If you do that, and you don't allow me to migrate analog channels, the way you've, you've just talked about. You, you mentioned the migration of analog channels because that gets you a lot of spectrum back. But if you don't allow that, and you ask me to deploy 200, 300 HD channels, 200 or 300 standard definition channels, DOCSIS 3.0 with uh, its expanded uh, bandwidth needs, um, voice over IP as well as circuit switched in various markets, when you look at all of that bandwidth required to pull that off while still maintaining 70 or 75 analog channels, uh, you're going to need that kind of bandwidth to be able to do it. 
Um, the only way not to need that kind of bandwidth is if you are able to migrate some analog spectrum uh, to digital so that you can recapture that, that analog bandwidth. 